Welcome to the Inner Journeys Outer Adventures podcast. We got a solo episode today, um, and it's going to be about how I'm going to restart my training for my 100 mile trail race. Um, so the original plan that I had was on the end of April, I was going to be running a marathon, and life told me I shouldn't be doing that um, because of, of walking pneumonia or some sort of lung infection um, that I had going on for five weeks. So I basically am back at zero, restarting my training for this. So the way that I'm starting this training now, because I have lung, I've had lung issues and I'm trying to build back some lung capacity there. I'm only starting with like two to three miles of running um, each session. So I'm going to ramp up to three, three runs this next week. Um, and then from there, as I get into deeper into my training, probably a month to six weeks from now, I'll add a second run in so that way I can get more volume of running in because it'll be really, really tough to get in 70 miles in a week if I only do three runs. So I'll be doing more runs as I get deeper into my training and I'm slowly adding more miles each and every week. So if I do six miles this week, next week I'll do like nine miles. Then the next week I'll do like 12 miles. And then probably the next week after that, it'll probably ramp up even more because I should have a good base at that point, three to four weeks in to training to where I can really ramp it up and know that I'm feeling good with it. If I'm not, and I'm still getting some lung issues, uh, whether it's like coughing and hacking up after runs or during runs, I'll make sure I back off a little bit. And then once I feel good again, I'll start pushing that um, volume, the amount of miles I'm running um, with that. And I won't only be running. Uh, I think that's where a lot of people make mistakes when they're training for very specific things. Um, they're not taking into consideration um, that just doing one thing is going to be putting a ton of stress on your body and you need to do other things that will alleviate the stress on that. So with running, you're doing a lot of impact, a lot of impact on your ankles, your knees, your hips. Um, so those joints are getting a lot of impact. So the way that you can kind of alleviate that impact is by building muscle around those joints and having flexibility and mobility training in that um, in your training program. So I won't be avoiding lifting. I'll be lifting three days a week. I'll be doing a full body split. Um, so there'll be legs every day. There'll be an upper body every day. Um, and then I'll end my training with some sort of flexibility or mobility uh, work. So where I'm stretching out my hamstrings, I'm stretching out my hip flexors, I'm stretching out my hips, um, the outside of my hips, my groin. Um, I'll stretch out my calves and I'll make sure that everything I'm doing is to enhance um, my training. So that way I'm not getting overuse injuries that way I'm protecting my joints and that way I am going to be more functional when I get to my 100 mile race because no matter what in that 100 mile race, I'm going to be in pain. There's no no amount of training I think I can do to where I won't be in pain in 100 miles um, because it's going to be like a 24 hour event, maybe longer. So there's you just got to expect that. So I'm going to try to mitigate it as much as I possible by building muscle around my knees building muscle in my calves, building muscle around my hips, and then also making sure I have strength in, um, around those joints with mobility training and flexibility. Um, that way, I try to stay as injury-free as possible and as healthy as possible um, and not delay training because I'm you know, getting some overuse injuries, whether it's calves, whether it's feet, uh, whether it's knees or hips. Um, so that's how I'm attacking my training for this. And the, the full body split is going to be the same, not the same exercises necessarily, but the same throughout all, I think I have like 18 weeks now to train for this. So all 18 weeks, I'll be doing three days a week of full body split weightlifting. Um, and then ramping up my running slowly. Um, so it's, it's hard to imagine that I'll be running 70 miles in a week at one point right now because of where I'm at with like, I've ran maybe six miles this past week. So uh, eight miles this past week. So it's from eight to 70. It's a big jump. But if you trust the process, you slowly build up, you do the things you know you should be doing for your body, you will be able to get there and you'll be able to attack whatever event you're doing or whatever life you want to build. So you kind of take this into consideration, all the different aspects that I'm pulling into my training. You could still do that for a healthy lifestyle. You have your nutrition, you have your diet, you have your exercise, um, you have your flexibility and mobility training. It's very important if you have kids too to get up and down off the floor 
And if you want to, if you want to be there for your grandkids and be able to do the same thing, you're going to want to start debt training as soon as possible. Um, and then the, the one point on the diet is as I'm going more and more training, um, I won't be as strict with my diet because it's just gonna be hard to get enough calories in. So I'll get, I'll have sweets, maybe too many because I have a sweet tooth, but at that point, I don't think it'll matter as much. I'm still going to have my base of getting enough protein, getting fruits and vegetables, um, having, you know, solid carbs of which rice, potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, whole grains, oatmeal, things like that, that I'll have in my diet. So it'll be my good base. And then on top of that, I'm going to need more calories. So I'll, I'll have some sweets or something like that, um, or more fats. So that way I am not deficient in calories as I'm doing if you do 70 miles in a week that's probably like you're burning like rough estimate 30,000 calories in a week which is a lot so it's you need to do something extra otherwise you're going to be not recovering you're going to be in more pain um, your joints are going to feel it your body's just not going to have enough fuel to to perform for the training that you need training is not a weight loss thing so I, recognizing that I'm going to make sure that I, I am fueling myself properly, having my base and then things on top of that to add in more calories and make sure I'm feeling good with that. Um, and then sleep is always important. So I'm really good with having a set bedtime, set wake time. And that really helps me have good restful sleep throughout the night. And that restful sleep, deep sleep and REM sleep is what's going to make you recover and feel good the next day and feel like you have energy and not be run down, not feel like you're lagging behind um, and not having motivation to do your training. Um, if you know you're, you're sleeping well and you still don't have motivation to do your training, you're probably a little bit on the overhead training side. So you're going to need to back off a little bit, take some miles off, not push as hard in the weight room, um, and continue eating like you have been. So that way you can recover a little bit. And then once you feel a little bit more motivated again, not, you don't always go off feeling of motivation because, you know, that comes and goes very easily. Still having the discipline, but still checking in with yourself with that. And that's how I'm going to build from eight miles to 70 miles in a week. And then I'm, I'll have my week or two off, not off, but deload 100 mile trail race. So all together, it's going to be 16 weeks of building up, two weeks of deloading, race day, 100 mile trail race. And there'll be more to come with that. And you'll be seeing my suffering soon in that one. So that will be what I do for my training from basically ground zero, which I felt like I was below zero walking up a hill and I was winded, a small hill and I was winded to running a 100-mile trail race. So thanks for listening to the Inner Journeys Outer Adventures podcast. We'll see you next time.